There we go. All righty. Here we are. We are. We are live. So we are basically doing a basically a live rebuttal. Um, there's a lot of uh, chatter going on right now about remote ID. Um, and if you look at the thumbnail I threw up there, you know, shocking, isn't it? <laughs> it's not shocking because that's a redundant statement. Um, but it's, here and, yeah, it's, it's here and we knew it was coming. And now that it's here, let's, let's go over the document. I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people that, that peruse through this document and, um, everybody's going to interpret it differently. And it, it's, it's, what's interesting is you're going to hear other interpretations based upon still things in there that are gray. Uh, because even though there's black and white in the document, just because it's black and white, it doesn't deal with the issues of enforcement, um, how it's going to be enforced differently from region to region, from location to location, from airspace to airspace. You'd think it would be different but or the same, but it, nothing's the same. It's kind of like driving 100 miles an hour down a freeway and then going from one state to another. And it depends, you know, basically on and now that what I'm getting at is, is how we, we look at it. It's going to be different. Not the fact that we're going to, you know, not comply with it, but how it's going to be affect our flying and what things we need to do to prepare uh, for continuing to fly. If that's your intention. Oh, I don't think there's that much gray area on that thing. They, they're pretty clear on everything as far as I'm concerned. Well, they'll, believe me, there'll be some gray area people are going to find. They're like, oh, well, uh, look at the part, uh, Article 4, Section 5. In, uh, oh, you, you, mean, you mean our back alley lawyers that think? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, in, yeah, get, we'll get into that. We'll get into the law part because I, my son's a lawyer and he actually brought up he basically brought up what this other lawyer was talking about. Um, and he made the same thing. Don't give anybody any information that they don't need. It was basically never talk to the cops, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is great in practice, but <laughs> it's great in theory, actually. But in see, there we go. But in practice, don't is that always the best? Give any ammo to sink your ship with. Right. So, all right, here we go. So what we want to do is what Kai sent me, the PDF of the of the gen of basically the general um, executive summary uh, that's dated today. So part eighty nine. It says remote here. Let's get it up here. And this is the this is the piece of the executive summary that we're looking at. So instead of summarizing the summary, we're actually going to look at the freaking paperwork and 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 read it. I mean, you know, everybody needs to read this, and it's hard to read by yourself. So what Kai and I are going to do is help you read it. And there's English and then there's legal English, which. Right. And we guys, we're, we're guys, we are, we're just like you. We're hobbyists and we're going to look at it through the eyes of a hobbyist. And then of course, look at it, you know, is this something I can do? You know, is this something that's un, that's like uh that's unreasonable. And that's really what we get into. And a lot of people think, you know, anytime you get a rule, they're like, oh, crap, that's absolutely unreasonable. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not willing to do that. It's it. I'm going to drop my hobby. I'm going to take all my drones, put them up on eBay and sell them. And that's it. Final straw. I, I don't look well, at it. Everybody's going to sell their drones, you know, do to contact me. Right. Yeah. Contact me. And, of course, I'm going to give you a 50% valuation. <laughs> of what you paid for it to take it off your hands. Cause I'm not paying full price for something you're wanting to get rid of, but that's going to that mean that's a little no, bit no, more awesome. You can read the, all the 400 pages and um, do it, do it while you're sitting on the toilet. That way you have <laughs> of paper. read all 400 pages. That would be an exciting stream. Oh my God. I'll tell you what's not exciting. 400 pages of FA. Cause a lot of the stuff is, is just stuff that's, all they did was amend it. You know, it's just there. It's not, yeah. nothing's changed, you know? So they're just looking through it again. Actually in the 400 pages, there are reactions. What they, what they did in the 400 pages is they actually added um, uh, suggestions and, or uh, dis description uh, uh, language that was used by people suggesting things and, um, you know, based, based upon all the, 
material that we sent in, you know, so all the comments and things like that. They actually went through those comments. Well, so was there a section where some will say it like pride out of my dead hand? Yeah, out of my cold dead hand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, DJI actually has quite a few comments in there, which makes total sense. I mean, they got their group together and and I think I think the section I did catch was flying over people because of course they're amending that. If you're a 107 pilot, um, they are there are going to be let's not let's not get yeah, we're not going there, but... over people business because that's yeah. not part of this executive <laughs> summary. <laughs> Even more possum wants to use me. Let's, let's let's go take you know one battle at a time right now. All it's right, so here we go. Let's go to the bottom. What I want to do, I always like to start with the conclusion. Like I, you know, we know where this book is going, but what we want to do is we want to see where, where, what, what topics do we want to hit? So what I want to do is just go to the bottom of the executive summary real quick, just kind of introduce each of the topics. And then we're going to go back and we're going to bust out each of those, those, those ideas. It shouldn't take that long. I mean, it's, 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 it's plain old English. There's nothing here that none of us can understand. So first uh, of all, here, here, no, ain't more possum figure it out. This because, yeah. 400 pages is the solution to our next pandemic toilet paper shortage. Well, do you, 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 you have to print that off and that would, you know, just make sure you print it off with, uh, off with paper. cotton bond. <laughs> Find some cotton bond, I suggest. And then you take, you got to take off the rough edges. Okay. So maybe some sandpaper. Uh, recovery one drone, the language in older current models is about as clear as mud. Yeah. And I, and that's where you're going to hear the differences. As people go through this, they're going to pick out something that makes them really sore and angry, and then they're going to create all kinds of gray area around it. Like, um, like I told you, like flying over. They're 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 addressing the 107 because the 107 right now is more restrictive than the recreational pilot. In some of the wording, you have like so for example, you have to get uh, waivers, you know, or uh, you know that yeah in. And what they're trying to do is create an atmosphere where a waiver isn't always going to require it. Because a lot of people, I think, I think actually 51 drones said it best. We, th even though, even, okay. Cause he kind of ref brought up the idea that, that the FAA has bigger fish to fry in a lot of cases. And that's true. And yes, they do pick and choose who they want to, whose fish they want to fry, but they also, are lazy like everybody else. They know they can't cover every single thing 100% of the time. That's why you'll get recreational pilots, you know, dipping down into parks and getting a better shot with their, you know, their 35 millimeter cameras or whatever. They got somebody in the back like, oh, I'll get down there under 400 feet. Just wait a second here, you know? So anyway, so basically there are, five bullet points here that we're going to kind okay, of let me, let me address something here right. real quick Go that ahead. possum put out here already but the the last part here but the public broadcast my location is troubling uh, i i got news for you they've are that they, they can already pinpoint your location i've seen a uh, documentary where systems that are being installed around airports to keep uh drones out of airport uh, airspace they cannot just pinpoint the location of the drone they also can pinpoint the location of the transmitter that's controlling said drone so right the, that technology is not that hard to come by no the military uses it all the time to bomb people so um you want to know where the freaking signals come from you also want to know where the guy that's controlling the uh like a radar station it's kind of like counter radar radar and that's go it's the same thing it's just try they've been triangulating people's radio signals uh since you know 1932 probably so it's not a new thing i think triangulation probably started with the military it probably looked at recovery of uh, of downed aircraft with transmitters you get into all that kind of the, stuff the and you triangulation get started when uh England start came up was was the radar to intercept German bombers. Right, right, and it, it you know there was a there was tons of effort to locate sources of transmission, and when you transmit, 
you are basically giving up your signal or your location at any time. So anytime you're trying, that's why people, you know, they'll get burner phones with, 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 uh, you know, with, you know, uh, prepaid SIM cards. Yeah. So, you know, right. obviously they'll know where the phone is, but they won't know who the phone is owner is. And that's unless you pay, paid for it with a credit card and there you go. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Um, but anyways, let's look at that. So we got, uh, so really, real quick, I just want to go through the list and then we'll bust up through. And then, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll have Kai, you know, give me his thoughts. Um, and I'll, I want to listen to what his thoughts are on it. And maybe if I have, if I have a, um, a, you know, a, you know, just a, a you know, another twist to that. I try to, I guess I could be the devil's advocate. I'm really good at that. that's, I'm, that's my, that's my, my forte is looking at ways people can misinterpret information because I'm the king of misinterpretation. That's how I do. That's how I stay married. So, all right. What did she say? Okay. She said that I was supposed to, um, that the grass looked a little long. So my interpretation is that I need to find somebody to cut the grass for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, the yard would look so much. Better. All right, right. So anyway, so we've got uh, the major changes from proposed rule to final rule. Network-based internet transmission requirements. Okay. Um, now they're saying that network-based internet transmission requirements have been eliminated. Okay. The final rule contains broadcast only requirements. So showing basically the location of, um, of where you're broadcasting from. And of course, some, some uh, and then of course people are going to have to be able to intercept that broadcast. That's where people get freaked out. Uh, U S operators under exemption of limited recreational, uh, under the exemption for limited recreational operations may continue to register with the FAA once rather than a registered, uh, rather than registering each aircraft. So that's kind of nice. If you think about that, you know, not having 25 registrations, you have a license number like everybody else. Um, limited remote ID UAS had been, uh, Limited remote ID has been eliminated and replaced with remote ID broadcast module requirements. So we'll get into that. Uh, FRIA applications may be submitted to, and I, I don't, I don't, I have to look at what FRIA. You, do you know what FARA stands for? I, I'd have to look. But that's, that the, so that, that's the free areas like the AMA fields. Ah, uh, yes. So, so you're, you're the night. That's where I got a misinterpretation of. Of, of some of that with my quick rant that I had earlier um, beginning, let's see, 18 months after exec, it'd be interesting to see how those areas are set up because uh, Kai, you're already seeing those areas coming up. They're temporary uh, areas of temporary drone use that are popping up on maps where there is a area that will come up uh, within the uh, sky vector and you'll see it kind of, you know, yeah, know them. Then, know them yeah. yeah. So, so temporary, but think about if a, say you're going to have a party. Okay. You got a bunch of buddies that want to get together and y'all got your UAVs and you want to do the a. Is, the problem is you as such cannot file for an FRIA. Right. You have to. Yeah. So, but I'm saying is what I'm saying is that I'm like, say being the devil's advocate here, what if you could create temporary flight restrictions? Not it, it's not you're not creating a restriction, you're not, you're but not. you're notifying that hey, we, there's 25 of us that are going to be flying our. Now this is not in the document, by the way, but we'll we'll come back to that. But we'd like to fly in this area, this park area, um, and we just want to tell you, or not tell you, we want to uh, to to get permission to set up a two hour window where we could fly at a certain distance. Yeah, certain no, that's, not, that's not what this FRIA is all about. Yeah. So the and then FRIA then are, are, are areas that are created by a community based organization as recognized by the FAA or can be a school now. Okay. And why can't I be a community recognized Entity. You're not, you're not, you're not recognized by the FAA as a community based organization. So but if you get yourself recognized as a community based organization, then you probably could. So Bob's drone club can't be a, can't be the same as a, 
No, you need B7 like AMA. Why can't BDC be like AMA? If if you if you can go and get yourself recognized as such, then you can get in. Okay, that's I'm asking way too much. Last bullet point: educational institutions may now apply for. There we go. That's what you were saying. Well, it's community based organizations, so that's where your you know Kai actually jumped to the last bullet point. So basically, everything starts with operational rules, and that's kind of. Uh, where we're kind of going to look at or start through and, and kind of beat up area by area. So, and what I would like to do is just kind of peruse through this section and then determine, well, how does that affect me? You know, how does that affect my big, I think the biggest group is the group of people that are flying FPV right now with you know homemade with homemade aircraft and believe me the the you know the the ama has been flying like that for a long time but they're in a already recognized place which protects them and you can see that the ama was given some insulation with these rules but bob bdc bob's drone club who just made up his club three days ago is not recognized so but operating rules, what does it mean and how does it change anything? Well, the 55 or less rule is still in, in effect, right? Yeah. So anything under 250. So 250 grams. Not including 250, just under 250. So 249 and below. Well, see, here's some wording that bugs me right here. Likely. Um Broadcast remote ID messages directly from the UAV via radio frequency broadcast, likely Wi-Fi or Bluetooth technology. And we know the limitations of both of those, but I mean, Wi-Fi actually can go plenty far as long as you've got a good antenna system. Yeah. Bluetooth. Bluetooth doesn't have enough. Right. Okay. And broadcast will be compatible with existing personal wireless devices. So that's a good thing. That's something that we already have available to us in our controllers. No, no, that the broadcast will be compatible with any existing. Right, right. That's not the, that's not the device. It's, it's, everybody with a cell phone should be able to re, you know, receive that signal. This is where it gets murky, and this is where people get pissed. Standard remote ID messages include ID, UAID serial number, UAID session or session ID, latitude and longitude, altitude, velocity, latitude, longitude, altitude of control station, and emergency status and time marks. Um, so there you go. That's where everybody's freaking out right there. Because so basically, before you fly, app's going to have a little thing where it can receive that signal and pinpoint your drone and yourself on a map. Right. And of course, time mark is the big one. So they know exactly when you flew, how you flew, latitude and longitude, altitude, and all those other wonderful things. So there's tons of information there. Yeah, but um, I mean, that's, that's, in order to have a, the time mark don't make any sense because once you quit flying, I mean, it's pointless. Yeah reason they've got it in there is because in order to get in trouble with the FAA, they have to prove location and date and time. <laughs> XJet <laughs> says, I have a cordless drill. Does that count? <laughs> I ask, <laughs> ask uh, Philly Drone Life how that works with uh, time, location, and on all that. Right. And when you basically broadcast you know, live, you're giving time, location, all those things. Um. Range or remote ID broadcast may vary, and each UA must be designed to maximize the range at which the broadcast can be received. So we're getting, yeah, so this is where you're getting into the transponder stuff. Um, or the, you know, hey, you can buy this little module thing, and you're going to have to stick it on your 249, 200. Yeah, you're get, you get, you get, you get, getting ahead of yourself. Oh, there we are. All right, there we Point, so, point two of that. So these are basically all the things that your little tiny 
UAV is going to have to be, or your big UAV, of course, if you're flying within part 107 or not. And the one thing I didn't see in here is any separation between 107 and not 107. I'm sure they're using existing rules, except for the fact that they're opening up 107 to some other, another can of worms. Uh, here we go. Now, this is this is number two of that bullet point. Uh, this is the ID broadcast module. What is a module? How big is the module going to be? And what Kai said earlier, how much is the module going to cost me? How much is the and how much is the module going to cost me? And how much is the best thing going to weigh? Right, because if the module is going to weigh too much. My Mavic Mini is not going to be flying. Because well, your Mavic Mini wouldn't need the broadcast module because it's below 250. Okay, but if I put the... No, well, that's true. So does it count with the but module? If you, but if you, put a, if you put a skin on your Mini or a, a, a strobe on your Mini 2 that puts right. you over 250, then you got to also add this broadcast module. Or you fly with the LiPo, of course, which brings it just over that yeah, either way you know you get over to you hit 250 or above you you need to add this module you know so so we're getting into the weight police showing up um the guy that runs into your field there and goes all right guys because uh, obviously if you're going through the 107 course um you okay. have to have all that information well, before we picture a bunch of people come running to us i mean there's there's still this whole trespassing thing so you can right. stand out in the field somewhere you know just because you stand there broadcasting doesn't mean anybody and their uncle gets to come visit you. Right. That's that's a whole let's see. Sub 250 still needs remote ID if used for non-recreational purposes. And that's what XJet is saying right now. So um he's basically bringing up the fact that you know if you're operating in 107 rules, um you know, you're still remote ID compliant. Even if you're flying a teeny tiny little, no, I didn't, I don't see that in here, but I, he's seeing that in the ruling. Um, it says my drone will now have a large helium balloon attached to it. <laughs> oh, I, we know that uh, we know he, we're, if, if we're going to look at the, 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 the man with the rants. Um, yeah. But I mean, X set, you know, you have to weigh the helium balloon empty before <laughs> you, you take off because it's actual. You have to weigh the balloon. That the fact that you have helium in it was lift doesn't offset the weight of it. Oh wow! See, Kai's always screwing it all all the fun up. I I think I think of some really good, more more really like interesting way. Of, of trying to make this rule less applicable and Kai just brings you down to earth literally. So there you go. <laughs> uh, so this is getting into the broadcast module issue. And then um, it says, Oh, of course the remotely identify. Yeah. We got line of sight. These are all things that are part uh, ID message includes serial number, module latitude launch. So the module has to broadcast all of this information. Now I'd like to see, I'd like to have an engineer talk about, you know, what that do, doesn't a, does, well, a, DJ, a, a GPS doesn't broadcast anything. So anything that's broadcasting has to have a power source. Now you're getting into weight. Um, and oh, I can buy itself off of the battery and, and the drone. Yeah. You know, I flew, you know, flying my six inch quad the other day. Uh, you know, now I've got to add, I've got to add the ability for it to, to broadcast its location. Um, this is where you get people going, all right, I'm done with this. Um, I've had enough, you know, it's. So what's, what's your FPV, you either add a module to it and you have to stay with, and, and for some reason, this is stressed under the broadcast module. You have to operate with some visual line of sight. And that's probably why the broadcast module doesn't have to broadcast the or transmit the location of the ground station yeah because the, gr the ground there, station there, if you if you go back up to the paragraph one there's no mention of it about staying what's on line of sight but it does require you to uh, broadcast the location off the ground station 
and then for the broad for the broadcast module it's only uh the takeoff location and time mark they're assuming a short but there's a restriction visual line of sight so they're saying you know we can locate the drone and we should be able to see you from that drone Ivan basically says that says my Mavic Mini and Mini 2 have remote ID in their menus and is enabled. It says it's broadcasting my position and stuff. And the only thing that's going to change with that, Ivan, is the button. You're not going to have the ability to turn it off. That they, right now you can, but in future, in the future, when they do a future update, at least for us, it's you're not going to have that option to 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 you know to you know, to mask your location. Um, Ivan says he doesn't believe it's really working though. Um, oh, well, how is it, uh, how is, how is it going to be received? So, and I think what I think Kai and I were talking about earlier is that only certain people are going to have the ability to have access to this information. So you're, you're, I, I'm guessing this is the way we were going with that conversation it's that if somebody complains about your UAV, they have to go to the authorities who have access to this to be able to capture this information. Um, so technically, only the authorities would have the ability to pinpoint you, your location, your UAV, and that information. Is that correct? Is that Am I on the right page? Uh, no. What I think, what I think it read was... Only law enforcement people can decipher the uh, oh uh, your registration number. So the so in yeah, I, and that makes sense because you can buy an app that's that allows you to see whatever air, what aircraft are in the sky, but it doesn't tell you the name of the pilot. No, it doesn't there tell you, you the name of the pilot. Only law enforcement gets to see the the name of the pilot. So that that or makes that sense. Says, right. So so you can equate it pilot. Yet, so you can equate it to uh, any app that allows you to see aircraft in the sky, which is interesting, actually. Hold, hold on for just a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, yeah, so Kai's just got to pop out. So, you know, getting back with that, you do have you have privacy, but you don't have like drone privacy. So your your drone is is wherever in the sky. Okay. And, you know, people will know it's in the sky, but they, and they'll know the, there'll be an ID number attached to it. And they'll say, Hey, there's a drone operating. Obviously uh, a really smart person can triangulate the fact that you're the only drone pilot in the neighborhood. Cause guys, I've seen one drone this whole entire Christmas. I went outside, my dog was freaking out. And of course there's a, it looked like, I don't know if it was a mini or a spark. It looked like a spark the, from the sound of it, but it was just buzzing around the sky. Um, but one, one, I've seen one in maybe a year now as eight months, but, um, and maybe the la other drone that I saw was probably a Mavic or it was a, was a phantom, an old phantom, maybe a phantom four or something, but I don't see, I, I just, one of the things I don't understand, and maybe it's because of where I live. I just don't see volumes of drones anywhere. I never do. And I think that's what freaks people out is they think, oh, I saw one in the park the other day. It was a guy flying a small FPV drone around a uh, uh, 100, 100 meter pitch, basically. Soccer pitch. So it's just crazy how this is spiraled into identification. Thanks, Jet said that was him. He was spying on you. He's that was my drone. I was spying on you. <laughs> Xjet, you can spy on me anytime because I I am one of those people that does not have the fear of <laughs> of drones looking into me uh, into my. Uh, um, and if you do happen to fly over my swimming pool at the wrong period of time, <laughs> um, cheers is all I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Ivan, I'm actually going to test my remote ID tomorrow and see if anything gets broadcast. So I don't know how he's going to, how are you going to, how's he going to determine his broadcast? Well, that's the next. I mean, 
where's where's this app at and you know okay i'm, I'm actually going to bring up something that's related to this and I'm, i actually thought of this just a second ago oh god okay drone manufacturers okay dji's was put on i'm not i'm just bringing up this as a as a as a side note that they are restricted for buying and selling american parts and okay which they pretty much don't I can't imagine they buy or sell many American parts because there is they a shitload of American parts in the uh, air too. They somebody oh, okay. just published some of the chips are made by Texas Instruments. And, oh wow, okay. I don't think about the little circuit boards, and those are full of them. You're right. You are correct. I'm thinking about um, like you uh, FPV manufacturers. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably going to be a temporary disruption in their supply chain. Yeah. But um, how's it, you know, how are you going to pre prevent Good somebody? There, from, you got to go. Uh, hey, take, take it easy. Um, he's, he's of course going to have his own, I, you know, rants on this. He's been, he's definitely been, become an expert because of all the time he's put into this and all the dealings, you know, the actual court dealings he's had to, I, I'm just, we're just trying to, we're just trying to, to, you know, to just get through some of this, you know, this black and white material here, because it does get, it does get to the point where the average person needs to, you know, be able to understand it. And, you know, right now we're, we're discussing the, you know, what it means, for example, design and production rules for manufacturers. How does that going to affect us? You know, meaning that, Am I still going to be able to buy a, a flight controller? You know, or, you know, obviously motors can't be restricted, but stuff that allows things to fly, is that going to be restricted? You know, obviously people are going to still build, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't going to care about the rules and they're just going to build stuff anyway. They're going to fly, you know, you know, under the radar, so to speak. Well, there's going to be plenty of people flying under the radar with this, but here's a question in the chat. Will we see flight controllers, Maytech and the like, including remote ID on their boards? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that as part of the flight controllers. I think it'll just be a module, a separate module. And what that, that, mod that, that module, as we're seeing in this next part here, was the design production rules for manufacturers. All that stuff's going to have to be blessed by the FAA. And I don't think right. Maytag's going to submit their flight controllers to the FAA for approval. Right. Because it's, you know, this, just the time constraints, the, um, you know, all the restrictions just for that. It's easier just to sell a circuit board. And what you do with because the, there's nothing illegal about selling a circuit board. It's what you do with the circuit board that changes its its purpose. You know, it can be made for flight, but until it actually gets put on something and turns into a drone, does it become a drone? You know, <laughs> you have your SN95. I think it's all BS. It, it as as much as you know as it's much as I, I like it, it's the BS we have to put up with, right? It says under the rule, anyone can create a means of compliance. And I think the FAA wants that, but the cost of that compliance is where we're getting at. And right now, and I can say for my from my own standpoint, I'm like, fine, I'm gonna go get my 107. I'm going to keep it up to date. I'm going to uh, follow the rules and keep a logbook, do all the things that you need to do, fly, you know, fly uh, you know, in the envelope. But how much is that going to cost? And it's just like any hobby. Once the cost becomes restrictive, people break the rules and they and they break the law because they can't afford the cost of compliance. And that's my fear is that they're going to drive the cost of compliance so high that they're going to create criminals out of people that just want to have fun. And that's and that's troubling. But then you get into the whole issue of, you know, like any rule, you have to enforce it. And the FAA isn't, isn't going to send people all over the country working with law enforcement. For example, there's not going to be an FAA office, you know, officer that the federal government's going to pay for 
that's going to be in my little town or the little town next to it. So how are you going to stop it? And that's where you get into, you know, do I want to be a rebel or, you know, do I want to be compliant? Um, can I afford to be compliant? And that's what I'm afraid of is, is it's not fair. The yeah. fairness issue. Yeah. Well, so now we have the, the follow-up question as do we have to have a module for each drone. And I believe, no, reading these rules, I believe you will have to because you have to register each module with each UA for, for each UA. So you cannot use one module for several UA. Right? I, I didn't get that. I, I, did, it, did, it did say that your module, your module. Right here on the, on the bullet point and, and under two on, on okay. the broadcast module. Yep, me just look at that here. Enabled retrofit for existing UA and broadcast module serial number must be entered into the registration record for the unmanned aircraft. So if you register your module to your unmanned aircraft, you cannot change the unmanned aircraft on the module, can you? Well, that to me, that's a... Uh, okay, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to identify... Well, the question is, do we have to have a module for each of our drones, or can we right. use one and put it on our drones as needed? And, and my, okay, so because this the is way, my, the way The way it reads, you got to register. You, you don't have to register each one of your UAs. Right. You have to register each one of the modules. So, so quite honestly, in the, in the, in the restrict, in the relaxing of the restrictions of having your, each drone license, they're still doing that. They're just doing it differently. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get the fine print there. That's what makes sense. So, so you're, yeah. So one of the things I read earlier, I'm like, well, fine. Oh, that's great. They're actually making 107 pilots, uh, you know, more like uh, recreational pilots where we can get one license. We'll be looked at like we're driving, say, a four, uh, I've got a class, a class A license. Okay. So I get to drive 18 wheelers with air brakes. Now I can drive any 18 wheeler with air brakes in, in the, in the regular world. But with the drone world, each, each truck is registered separately. And with the remote ID module, it's basically doing that each UAV is going to have a distinct signature, not the pilot. The pilot will be flying with one license. Each UAV will have a module that makes it different from every other drone. Um, and that makes no sense to do that. I guess they're trying to identify the weight, the make, the model, um, so they know if it's heavy, uh, you know, I understand why they're doing that. Oh, is that a 55 pound drone or is that a 200, you know, 50 gram drone up there? You know, cause you can't tell. Interesting. That's an interesting, an interesting interpretation. And, and, and like I said, if you're a, if you're just a, an everyday hack like me and like Kai, we are, you know, we're just looking at this just like you. I mean, I'm, and I'm glad that he's willing to go through this with me because this is overwhelming bullshit. What did I say? Excuse me. Overwhelming stuff. Okay. Um, if you're just going through it by yourself because, you know, but am I willing to do it? Yeah, I, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm going to be working on compliance and I'm going to hopefully buy a drone. I think my next, I, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a drone with this crap built into it. Cause I don't want to add. So now, so now what happens? Well, you don't, you don't want to add anything. You are restricted to the. Yeah. I guess, I guess it's like a, identification areas right there. So your FAA recognized identification areas. So basically the AMA fields, this is the but FRI. Right? A, lot of, a lot of the AMA fields don't even want drones. Right. Or FPV or anything on their fields because. Yeah, and you have to, of course, be within the, the... You have to be a member of the AMA. You have to be a member of the, the specific club, and it just... Right. And I, to me, I, the restrict the club restriction thing is, is, to me, always been a... 
you know, I, I know they're trying to. So yeah, Johnny Drone Flyer said, would the module be removed for different drones? You, you could. Because they're saying that, no, they're saying that you'd have to add no. the module on. And no. it has to be specific to that drone. No, you register, you register the, the module to your to to your drone to the drone. So the module and the drone you only, become, you only have to register yourself like you do now and, and use your registration number on all the all the drones you own. Right. And I think most people are gonna frickin' vent that be registered for each drone. Right. So each drone's gonna have its own module. That makes it distinctly different, just like a license plate for your car. Um, you can't like, well, you can switch license plates. <laughs> the government did do that. Uh, the local governments did it because they didn't want to have to recreate freaking license plates for every freaking car. And, you know, obviously you're looking at volume there. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get logic here. And, and right now I'm having a hard time finding some logic with some of the, some of the things it's, it's asking. Um, because you know we can transfer license plates from car to car. Why can't we transfer a module from drone to drone? Especially if it's going to cost us a lot of money. Um, no, no one device per. That's that's one factor we don't know. It, yeah. How permanent is the the broadcast module registration? And we'll find that out. Just hop in online and say, okay, you know, I'm going to just change that module from. My evil, my Mavic Air. All right, he's just okay. That makes sense. We're because that's what we do with the. That's what we let's see. Bill Florence. Let's see. This is an example of a required broadcast stream for. T oh, what's what's that all about? Only yeah. FA and Leo can see. Oh. Okay. Oh, so that's the that's the he's basically putting the up the coordinates. Yeah, he put up the coordinates. Thank you. Hey, Bill. Thank you for putting that up. And in uh. Only FA and Leo, which is yeah, law enforcement, can see your 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 name in that information. Thank you. That's actually really good for you know. But even then, a lot of people don't want to have law enforcement or the FA. That's that's a totally different subject. But uh, Johnny Drumfire says that makes no sense. Now, what 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 Kai was saying about taking okay, say you buy a drone. And it doesn't have a module on it, and you add a module to it. Okay. And then you sell that drone, you take the module off, you sell the drone, buy a new one that doesn't have, a, assuming it doesn't have a module, you take your old module, put it on a new drone, and you register it with, say, a Mavic 2 or a Magic Mavic Zoom. That's what I'm thinking. We're so the, the right. license plate so as, as, as quick lift as the internet is. Can I just, you know, fly my that module one week was the titan and next week was the cinema yeah you, you should, should be able to you know, the day off can i just go on and say okay today i'm going to use this module was this drone you could do it with technology you should be able to do that well that's 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 one of the questions they're not answering in this document okay and i think that i think somebody's going to bring that up they'll bring up the all right holy crap dude we're we're how many how how many minutes are we in this? How often can you change the registered UA to the module? You right. Know, is there is there a limit on how many times you can use it or how many times you can change the registration on it? Okay, the FA will begin accepting applications for FRIAs, okay, 18 months after the effective date of the rule. Applications may be submitted any time after that. FRIA authorizations will be valid for 48 months, may be renewed, and may be terminated by the FA for safety and security reasons. So there it goes. Now, you have to create a drone interest group, right? Kind of like at school, like you were saying, you're bringing up, say I create a group at at work and we could create an entity with the FAA tell them and give them our plan. This is where we're going to fly. This is where we're going to be doing our outdoor activities. Uh, a school can do that now. Right. I don't even have to create an entity. You, you just ask the school would have to go and apply and ask for this FRIA. FRA. Right. So they're not restricting education and that's good. But my, my question is, which school is going to take on a liability? 
Right. And that's, there's actually, I, I, I talked to Kai and Kai actually brought it up and there are schools that are doing it. And like our school didn't want to take on some liability that I was, I was bringing up, Hey, I want to create a drone interest group. Um, and, uh, our, our, our compliance guy, our safety compliance guy said, absolutely not. That was, a, yeah. So <laughs> said, Nope, no drones. Um, now this is how it's going to change. Raytheon is a major military um they are a contractor in the united states and they're based in utah raytheon i hear is giving money to drone interest groups around our state i think that money is going to change people's minds a little bit about you know especially raytheon raytheon's a big company they make missiles and crap electronic uh yeah, well, Raytheon, Raytheon does a lot in radar technology, satellite right. technology, not just military, also civilian. Yeah, so so they're bigger. They're they're a they're a basically mainly a civilian contractor that has uh, has military contracts. Let's see. Didn't they say DJI is banned from the U.S. tech, uh, such as remote ID? Well, they're not banned from. You can still use their devices. They're just being punished for not complying with mostly civil rights violations. You know, the fact that they have concentration camps in Western China, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's where it gets into. They're they're being punished for that. Obviously, the technology issue is also a big deal, but they're not banned. The federal, our, our federal government is banned from buying them to use for, like, for example, if you want, if you, I was operating a state park and I wanted to do surveillance of the Grand Canyon, I'd have to use an American-made drone. I couldn't use a DJI. No, you, you can use a drone that's not on the on the list on, on the acceptable list, right? And tell me the names of those. I mean, how expensive they, they are. Because I literally have to create my own drone company, build it. <laughs> now, there's there's companies that are, um, but none that we, you know, recreationally buy drones from. Uh, let's see, design and production rules. This is for manufacturers. Um, most unmanned aircraft must be produced as standard remote ID unmanned aircraft and meet requirements of this rule beginning in 18 months after the effective date. So they get basically a little over a year of to basically. A year and a half. Yeah. Uh, broadcast modules must be produced to meet the requirements of the rule and minimum. Performance. Use. Yeah. So they have to meet that when they go in for their FA and their uh, FCC. You know, they have to basically say, hey, this is how we're going to do that. Yeah. And then it says the final rule establishes minimum performance requirements describing the desired outcomes, goals, and results for remote identification without establishing any specific means or process. So they, they're going to tell you, okay, your, your signal has to reach at least two miles. We don't care how you get the signal two miles as long as it goes two miles. Uh, consensus standards, bodies develop means of compliance. So this gets down into, they also talk about, uh, the UA must self test. So the UA cannot take off if remote ID is not functioning. That's where you're getting. Now, if you're a builder of drones, that's problem because I cannot do that. I cannot, it has to have basically a cutoff switch. So if it's not functioning correctly, your drone has to be prevented from being from taking off. Yeah. So that's this would be something they would have to implement on and beta flight or INAF or whatever. Right. You could do it. Yes, whatever whatever system you use, whatever software you use, it, it would have to have a thing in there that if you don't have the broadcast module hooked up, you can't fly. Remote ID cannot be disabled by the operator. Remote ID broadcast must be sent over un, must be sent over unlicensed radio frequency spectrums received by personal wire uh, uh, received by personal wireless devices, EX Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and must be designed to Matt. You just brought that up. Maximize range at which the broadcast can be received. 
So it has to, you know, like you're saying, it has to broadcast further than the drone can fly, basically. Yeah. So now that DJI is advertising, we got nine kilometers of range right. plus this thing. The broadcast would have to be nine kilometers on that as well. Right. So that's going to put a little damper on things. Out of air traffic control. These are the other provisions. This is the other stuff. This is where you get into some just. Yeah, this is this is the this is the nasties right here. Um, because air traffic control doesn't want you to mess with them. They don't want they don't want these systems to interfere with their normal way of doing things. They don't want people calling them up. They don't want people interacting with them. They just want to be able to see what's going on. And then you be responsible, basically, yeah. what's going on here. Basically, what they're creating is a second plane for the remote ID. Yeah. For UA. Instead of putting that in the lap of ATC, we're now on our own playing field with a remote ID. They have a aeronautical research. So if you're just trying to test out your systems, that you can test those out. Final rule provides a mechanism for the FAA administrator to authorize deviations from operating requirements. <laughs> well, they have well, the right FAA administrator can authorize. Stuff. Right, they can do what they want. They can basically say, hey, Amazon, you can do what you want. You got a lot of money, and if you give me a kickback of, you know, a million bucks and you just stick it in my bank in the Maldives, I would, I will, I will authorize and deviate you <laughs> Let's see. Uh, foreign registered civil unmanned aircraft operated in the United. There we go. Uh, it says a rule allows for UA registered in a foreign country to be operated in the United States only if the operator files a notice of identification with the FAA. <laughs> this enables the FAA and law enforcement to correlate a remote ID broadcast with a person. So does anybody want to visit the United States with their drone anymore right now? Uh I want to. I just wanted to go to the Grand Canyon and take a picture of my family from a bridge. Okay. So we have Bill Florence saying broadcast module serial number has to enter into your drone registration record, which can have many drones under it. And uh, I, I'd kind of like to see there was something. Yeah, broadcast module serial number has to be entered into your drone registration record. Yep. So they're going to, yeah, serial number your record. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay, I see what they're doing. So if we go back in that last. I see. Thanks, Bill. appreciate that. Well, so I, want to, I want to know where he came up with that information. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Could you, could you tell him the, could you tell him the provisions here? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. What page of 470 pages that comes on? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not talking about the 470, but. Well, it's got to be in here somewhere. Uh, and, and if you go on to the last paragraph again, you know, US, UAS operators under exemption for limited recreation operations may continue to register what the FAA wants while registering each aircraft. However, each standard UA or broadcast module serial number must also be entered in the registration right record for the unmanned aircraft. So <clears throat> can we have several unmanned aircraft registered under the same broadcast module? Right. And that is one of the questions that I'm having. That's not really being clarified in this document right now. So on, 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 no, Aaron, on the side of caution, I would say, you know, you have to have one module for each drone, but. Yeah. <laughs> Javier, I think Javier is basically saying that the drone community is kind of like the gun community now. <laughs> From my cold, dead hands. You know, you're going to have, I'm, I'm going to, you're going to, you're going to see freaking dead random someday holding out his freaking Mavic mini from my cold, dead hands. And we're going to be, uh, you know. This is not. Yeah, this is my big green. This is the Goonie Bird, by the way. The freaking Goonie Bird. Now they're not going to let the Goonie Bird fly anywhere because, obviously, it's very scary. 
I would yeah, be afraid of that too. The the emergency carrier or the operator of it? <laughs> probably the operator. Uh, oh man, the carrier, the goony bird, or the operator? Probably the operator. I but, think. I, yeah, there's there's still a lot of questions open on this. I kn I knew we'd have questions after this. I knew we would get through it, and we would still have questions as to some interpretation. It just it's just like anything. You know, you've got two things. One is compliance. Now, the FAA is, you know, say you've checked all the boxes and crossed all the T's, that kind of thing. And your law enforcement agency or your a local FAA branch, like where I live, I pretty much live in the Wild West, doesn't give a freaking hairy rat's butt because we've got meth coming through from Vegas. We've got truckloads of pot coming from freaking Colorado. You know, and the last thing they give a crap about is an ounce of freaking drone flying over my head uh, when we're picking 10 pounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it's, it's all about, it's all about personal, you know, re, uh, conviction, I guess when we're getting down to it. Um, the drone police is, is out there and that's, I think 51 drones. The Karen, saying that, the Karen that are all going to keep us in line. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think the community, and we're going to get to that on uh, on our stream, uh, our our New Year's our New Year's stream. But we're going to get into you know how do you want to how do you want to take this stuff? Where do you want to go with it? You know, and not even more possible if you want if you're that interested in all 470 pages. Now, how about you read it and let us know? <laughs> no, <sh> <laughs> I'm going to let some other people read it too. Um, because all these rules, though, this stuff here, what was the date of this one? This one is now, obviously they're going to put it on today's date because a lot of this stuff was written, you know, months ago. Here we go. Steve Dixon, administrator. This would be my favorite part right here. All right. I just made all this stuff for you guys. Here you go. Eat this crap. Let's see. ADS out prohibition. Yeah. So I remember that gimmick that DJI did on the air too was the ADSB receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now they're talking about ADSB out. So that was ADSB in. In, right. But there's an ADSB out, which yeah. is supposed to be on every aircraft in, in the airspace. Right. Kind of like, I think I brought that up, like being uh, like a, like being a friend or foe, you know, intention F I F F, you know, well, we're, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not going to be, you know, that would show us on the scope of the air traffic controllers, right? ADS be out and they don't want to clutter up the airspace with us. I mean, I, I <laughs> just picture the poor guy in a little, control tower out there yeah. boondocks of utah <laughs> oh yeah he's looking at the radar scope <laughs> and here comes dad random six inch cross <laughs> um dad, uh, dad random uh you you know you, you've been authorized uh to uh, 399 feet uh and uh you are i know you're doing a video right now but uh you need to get down to 380 we've got a commercial plane flying in from phoenix uh it's I know this is class D here, you know, <laughs> this is class D airspace, but, uh, uh, by the way, uh, I watched your last video and I really liked it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have to carry radios. We don't have to cr carry satellite internet antennas. Cause yeah, we don't want that. They, they took out the, the internet requirement for all that. Yeah. So it, it's it's bad, but it's not as bad as we initially thought it was going to be. Yeah, it says yeah right there. It says operation is uh, they expect the it says the equipment you know it, to be an aircraft, you have to be operating under radio communication and and of course it's different. It's you know they don't want like like you're like Kai is saying they don't want seven. Could you imagine the airspace? after Christmas in, you know, around in New York, <laughs> there'd be freaking blips everywhere. Holy crap. We're being invaded by the, the Russian Chinese air force. <laughs> I'm adding the Russians and the Chinese together. Cause that's what it would look like. 
there's 7,000 aircraft out there. Holy crap. Get the freaking, you know, you know, get, get the, get, you know, they'd have, they'd have to set up those freaking, uh, those air, those, uh, those, I forget those chain guns that they have on freaking ships that looks like a laser beam to shoot all the aircraft out of the sky. <laughs> I mean, old Gatlin guns. <laughs> yeah. I forget what they're called. The ones that are freaking got the big radar scope on the top. It's like seven feet tall. They're actually loading those things onto, onto trucks. Now those things are scary. Yeah. But all right. I know we're having a little fun here. But they like. But I think Kai got to it right there. They they're trying to simplify it. They, and I think if you if you look at if you get get on a remote, like you can see Remote Pilot One Hundred and One up there because both us, me and Kai, are both uh, involved in Remote Pilot One Hundred and One. But um, Jason Shepard pretty much says it a thousand times. They don't want to talk to you. You are not a. You are not something that they want to even deal with. You know. You are a you are a freaking drone pilot with a FAA certification card. So don't think you're a pilot. You know, I I think that's funny. I I I was talking to my friend who flies uh, who just retired from the Air Force, and he's now a captain. He was a captain when he retired. Now he's a ship captain. <laughs> he got his captain's license. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not I'm not going to call you Captain Dad. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be anybody's freaking captain. That's too much responsibility. Oh crap! But then, anyway, it's it's so yeah. It is going to be cowboy, maybe, but not captain. I th I think what we need to do, Kai, is we need to, as we're going through this 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 journey of drones. Well, you're, you're on vacation, so you can sit down and read the 470 pages. And write the cliff notes. I think I can boil it down to 10 rules. Just 10 things that you should do, and you'll never get in trouble. I'm, I'm sure I could do that somehow. As much as I don't want to do that, I hate rules and I hate lists of things because that's like the hot thing on YouTube is for people to go, these are 10 things that you should know about the Mavic Mini. Yeah, no crap, dude. Um, 10 reasons why you should buy it. 10 reasons if you, if you, why if you, you push the, If you push the left stick forward, the drone goes up. <laughs> Item number one. Uh, if you move the right stick to the left, it will go left. Uh, we don't, I'm just, uh, and you wonder why I've never made a video like that. I couldn't do it. I literally would cry in the pro, in the process of it. Do they are they necessary? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just not that kind of guy. I hold it more was the was the golfing roads. What was it? If it goes left, it's a hook. If it goes right, it's a slice. If it goes straight, it's a freaking miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> the 10 drone commandments, and you'll never get in trouble. Ivan, I think you literally could get it down to 10. If you do these 10 things, you will never be on the radar. And the, and the key is the radar. Oh, I can, boil, the freaking I, radar. Can, I can I can boil it down to one. Just don't take off. <laughs> don't fly. <laughs> uh, I had so much time. I got I had so much fun flying the other day, even though I did kill my freaking uh my balance lead. I and I did see Kelly's balance lead too. They we have twinner ba batteries right now. <laughs> well, I eat more possum. He's he's bringing up a good point. Flies 20 miles from the nearest small city and municipal airport out in the boondocks around cows. Often below the tree line. Why force me into this out there? Yeah, exactly. And that, um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything, but you know, you're under the radar, literally. And, basic, basically, they are trying to one size fits all. Right. East to West Coast. And unfortunately, right. there are some people that proved them right. Right. Recently. Yeah. And, and, and we're working hard at this. I, I think Kai and I, yeah, I'm going to take this freaking document down because it's making us both want to, it's, it's making my eyes water. All right. But I think, I think kind of the, to knock this thing out, I, I think we're trying to, we want to keep, we want to keep people in, excited about this hobby, not for personal reasons, but because you like to do it. And, that's pretty much the way I look at it. You know, don't, don't make something bigger than it needs to be. 
and then figure a way. And then I, I told you, I'm going to figure a way forward. I'm going to create a way forward. Like, hey, Kai, when you first, when, when, what year, well, I'm going to give, I'm going to try to create an analogy here and see if it works. Okay, here we go. I'm going to ask Kai a question. Okay. Here we go. Kai, when, when did you first get excited about scuba diving? I'm going to bring it in scuba because we both like scuba. When did you go, holy crap, I want to do that? Actually getting, well, actually me starting in scuba diving was a total by accident thing. Um, I, I've i actually kept saltwater aquariums for several years now. Yeah, there you go. And in one of the groups, somebody popped up and said they had a low cost way to get certified for scuba. But they need to do it as a group because the guy was doing a group rate. So the right. more people we got in it, the better. It's so a good group I, activity. All right. Sign me up. And you don't and you think it's easy for Kai to scuba dive. You guys don't understand. You have to find a seven foot freaking wetsuit somewhere in America and you ain't gonna find it. So literally he he has well, to I, try I to out of Sweden. Yeah, you, you can't. Well, that's true. They have some freaking pretty tall dudes there, but not a seven foot size. No, I got the the tall booties. So, really, yeah. you got it to work like that? Yeah. You no, can't tell me that, you're you're screwing up my analogy, Kai. I'm trying to show you everybody how hard it is to dive, but how important it is that you want to do it so bad. <laughs> That you're willing well, to go. We could, talk, we could talk about my dry suit. Okay, there you go. I'm just that saying. Measure me three times for because every time the shop sent the numbers to to the manufacturer, the manufacturer says there's no way these numbers can be right. And, and Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna so slip over to Mike. Finally, so the shop finally told him, "You don't understand. The guy is seven foot tall." And then that finally registered with them. Yeah, because. You know, you don't always need to use a wetsuit. Obviously, I I, I flew, I, I flew, I, I dived as much as I could without one because I found right away that, you know, diving without a wetsuit is pretty nice because you don't freaking get buoyant, you don't have to wear weight and all these things. That wearing, a, I mean, can you imagine a seven foot wetsuit? Those things float. So if you have a seven foot wetsuit, you get all this buoyant material, and the less wetsuit, the better. So I like, you know, Farmer John, you get the small ones, but um, what I'm saying is. Have you ever got to dive a hooker system? Were you on a on a long hose? No, I've never done that. I've never done the. I've, the, I've the done, I, I did some volunteer work at the Texas State Aquarium a couple of years ago, and we would dive on the, on a long hose. But you have not. got to put a shit ton of lead on you to get you to sink because you because you're full of air in salt water. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing I, you know, you have fifty pounds of lead slung around your hips one of the things about wearing the weight the weight belts is it really affected my back especially in the in the salt water and i had i had to weigh i forget it was 30 pounds or something that i have to freaking have on it was a lot of weight that was maybe it wasn't 30 maybe it was like 15 or something like that no maybe it was 30 it probably was it was freaking heavy um mike henrick i just want to make so he's saying that this is a really this is kind of a really important point about you know wanting to do it so bad that you're, you know, it, 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 it keeps you kind of going. He's basically he says he's got, he got, has cancer and, he, and, it, and it, it, it distracts him from all the bull crap. Back in the day, back when I was probably 15 or 14 years old, I got, I got one of those scuba magazines and I would sit in the library and I would look through every single freaking page and I, and all I could think about from then on was how I was going to do it. I literally was saving pennies in a box going, I want to scuba dive. I'm going to, okay, this is how much a regulator set costs. This is how much um, the, the, the fins are going to cost. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a freaking mask. I, I was doing this stuff when I was really young. And, and what I'm saying about, you know, everybody going, well, if, if these rules change, I'm never going to be able to do it. That's bull crap. Because when I was when I turned 20, like 20 or 21 years old, I had nothing. I didn't have a freaking pot to piss in. But I found a way to scuba dive. And not only did I find a way, 
to get my certification, I found a way to become a dive master and everything was working against me. Car payments in school, um, finding places to live. It's like anything. If you want to do it bad enough, you'll figure a way forward. And that's kind of my message, you know, and like with Kai, I mean, he's freaking seven feet. He's freaking got to have a seven foot goggles. Just kidding. That's <laughs> He's got to have an extra large wetsuit. Goggles. He's got big hands. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of speaking of big things, I guess I can, you know, give a give you a little preview of uh, what happened last weekend. Oh yeah, here we go. The video, Check the video is sure screens. sure to follow. All right, here we go. Put it up. Put it up, guy. There we go. Here we go. Let me get this thing. Here we go, guys. You got it. You got it. You got to appreciate that. The Phoenix didn't go too well. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh, the freaking. Oh, I didn't even notice the freaking nose cone is totally just. I thought it was made out of foam on the front. It's not. No, the, the fuselage itself is ABS. Oh, wow. You broke an it ABS it freaking fuselage. Broke, it broke on both sides. You barely can make my cursor out, but it broke on both sides there and there. The whole motor mount is shot. I mean, there's no fixing that. And actually, it folded back here in the tail. Wow. It folded over there. There's a big hole on the side of that thing. <laughs> Eat more possum said, ouch. <laughs> yes, that's what he that's what the pilot said. <laughs> Ouch was not ouch was the when the batteries start catching fire. Oh yeah, he had a fire too. He sent me a picture of of a burnt circuit board. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, you had a fire. <laughs> no, on the circuit board that was the plywood tray to the Oh my lord. Yeah. Cause you have to have you have an attachment tray in there, right? And then that basically everything bolts to it. Uh the wings look good though. The tail, it looks symmetrical. You'd think you could take well, you some molded on, plastic. On the on the far side, how that uh, aileron came loose on that outside. Oh, yeah, I can see that. that, that was, on the that was actually fixable. But the wings look good. Usually, you know, you dip in and, you know, usually it goes nose first because that's the, where the weight is. Yeah, no, this thing wing stalled and just went nose first into the ground. Yeah, that's and then now you guys you gotta know how big that is. That's a really, really big glider. How yeah. big is the wingspan? Almost eight foot. Yeah. Did you have it behind you there? Isn't it sitting behind you there? Yeah. Uh, no, I've got it sitting back there in the in the corner. Let well, me stand, let can me I stand up with it and show it how show us how small it is. <laughs> no, I don't I don't have it put together anymore. Okay, so. all right, okay. Uh, yeah, I want to Duct tape will fix it. That's what Patrick Mars said. <laughs> There's the battery tray. Let's right, see here. Hold on. Let me put that up here. Hold on. Oh, yeah. That's the picture he sent me. I saw the fire. Look at that. That's what a bat. Guys, that's what a. Hey, did anybody see the Tesla that lit on fire in Texas? <laughs> now, think of it. Now, think of that lipo. But then add like a hundred, a, a, a thousand of them to the bottom of your car. <laughs> That's a Tesla. Does a Tesla use lipos or lions? Lions, probably, yeah. right? Lions, yeah. Still, it's chemistry. Uh, well, since we're since we're on the on the word of, of wisdom, so if you look at my little camera mount here, you see now I have little zip tie right there holding oh, it, nice. and I see it that. to the to the screws yep so as i was flying on saturday um i had a little run in was a cattle guard or cattle panel yep and then shortly thereafter i had a run in was a tree well then i land eventually landed the quad and found that the camera was gone we took off with the camera when I landed, the camera was gone. I flew just over five minutes, and I searched for about five hours to find that blessed camera. 
Kai was flying. He's like, holy crap, my skills are getting so good. It's like, it's like I lost. It's like I lost like a hundred ounces to my drone. And he's like, he's like going all over the place, and then he lands like I Here, didn't lose. See the tore out <laughs> screws, screw holes. Yeah. It blows you away how quick, guys. I, my little tiny Instago just explodes off of the freaking. I had it freaking strapped down. Those little straps just snap. There's so much kinetic energy. It's just, it's just like that, and it's so sudden and it just jolts. And then those little, but it's a good thing. Because by it falling off, it reduces the actually can create the possibility that it doesn't actually break the camera. And obviously, your camera looks good. Looks like it's in good shape. So, but anyhow, yeah, uh, the camera didn't suffer any, but it took is that me. That one you want to sell me? It, <laughs> no, no, the one I want to sell you is still sitting here, fresh, fresh in a box. He's got it. If anybody wants to buy this camera before me, I think I might have to end up buying this thing. He's, he's giving me a couple notes, some numbers that are very, very, very exciting right now. And I do need a, I would like to have that camera. I would like to have it. Now I have a GoPro six. I don't and I do have an Instago. I have yet to fly the Instago on my drone, which is probably going to go on soon because you, with an Instago 360, you can get the most very interesting video, but uh, that I want to, I want to get that uh, Instago 360 SMO. Yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, naked version of the yeah, I, I'm, I'm a lover of that too. I think that is the that is the crap, man. That is the, um, but I, but I would like to have the uh the inst the the full camera, the the full Osmo action, and that's you know I have to decide. You know, should I buy Kai's camera? Or should I buy a camera I can only use on a drone? Well, with Kai's camera, I could use it you know, for vlogging too, I could set it down and have a second camera and then, you know, with sound and then I can have, you know, so you get all those interesting, um, you know, shots when I'm, when you're flying and stuff. Um, and you could do that with another action camera and, uh, you'll see a lot of creators do that. They hook one onto the basket of their go of their, their shopping cart and they'll put one on their hat cam and then they'll use the drone camera and then you just bring all those together and, post-production uh do you think we hit the topic i think we did i think we straightened it out and then my daughter's calling me here we go it's amelia so let's see she's probably holding her hello Dinner. all right there you go i just knew it was time all right be down there thank you yeah, bye. bye it's burrito time i'll be believe me it's gas night there will be some serious gas to uh to address after i get done with this uh, Ivan, last the thing he says, uh, this is Lion, it's Tesla tech. You're correct. He's they probably have put a lot of uh, um, this is oh, all, your, all your cordless power tools are Lion power too. You're correct. I was thinking about taking a battery apart, a cordless tool apart, and just sucking the freaking Lions out of it, you know, because all of them are usually good. They just it's the it's the the smart board that goes bad on them. The batteries are usually fine. And we did actually look at, I was actually thinking about, you. I showed you and you showed me actually. Kai actually showed me you can buy the plastic trays to make your own Lions that come with the balance lead and the XT60 connector. And all you got to do is put the cells in there and then wrap it up. Just get some duct tape and, and you got yourself a freaking, a, yeah, or shrink wrap it. But it's a little heavier because you got the plastic. But I'm, I was looking at the part costs. I didn't know what ba what batteries to buy though, because you can buy a lot of different Lions, and some are way more expensive than others. And I did, I was like, "Oh crap, which ones are the ones I should buy?" That's where you look at the discharge rating, and Dis there, there's there's a lot of confusing data on on those things. Yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't buy them unless I knew, you know. Of course, this the 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 there's a lot of black market Lion batteries. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of remanufacturing of those. So you never know if you're getting, you know, a Japanese version versus a Chinese version because they, you know, they just make them. Well, there's, but, a, there's a pretty good store. It's called the 18650 Battery Store. Yeah, you want to show that, Kai? You can show that one up here. We'll put that up. Yeah, I'm going to take mine down here. But put, here, let me remove that. 
Where's the 18650? Let's see. Stop sharing that. Oh, there we go. This is the one he showed me. But I would before I would buy any batteries, I would buy the other stuff because the tray is only like $7 um, on Banggood. Of course, it'll take you a year and a half for it to show up. I might build my first Lion battery. Now, how many cells should I use, Kai? I mean, you know, you can use more than you've got a 1S. Let's oh, see. You've got a. It all depends on how you want to run your battery pack. I mean, you right. get serial and you have parallel. So, so that's a six serial, but then right. you can do three parallel and use a total of 18 cells. 18 cells, yeah. Could I make it like an in-between number? Look at this one here is a Samsung, has a 15 amp discharge on it. Right. Now you put that on on a on a 3P that puts you 45 amp on, on discharge current. And then I would need how many okay. cells? Something the whole battery would weigh about three pounds. Three, yeah, exactly. And that's the so problem. They're, what, 50, they're about 50 grams per cell. Keep so. more possum says VTC6, I think same cells GEP RC uses. That's those are the those are the Sony ones. I think. I have to go eat dinner. <laughs> Ivan says, go have dinner, Dad Random. Family's waiting. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. Um, but then we're let's have this conversation. Um uh, uh, maybe let's have it. Let's have uh, let's put this up for because I want to. I actually want to have this conversation because I think it's worth the project. I think it's actually worth making it. Yeah. Just to do it because it's not a huge. It's not a. It's not something that's like beyond our. You know, I think if you start soldering them together, you have to have the knowledge of how to set up the balance lead. But if you have a circuit board built onto a, a that's already built into a uh, uh, a tray, and all you have to do is slap the batteries in and then shrink wrap it. There's there's some there's some good instructional video on how yeah. to build lithium ion battery on YouTube. But I want to build a a a, a three thousand ma, a small one, because I I only want to get eight to nine to ten minutes. Six S. Um, I don't need I don't want a twenty minute battery. I want to. Have you have you set it up in your OSD? Can you see what kind of amperage you you draw on your? Um, I I will check. I, I what I'll do is I'll check. I can and I will. I need to do that to see how many amps I'm drawing. You're right. Um, I've, I've got it in my on on the Titan. It's actually part of OSD. You know, yeah. on, on a on screen display. Yeah, how many amps it pulls. And I, I, would I, do do it, I would have to do it on a 6S 2P. 2P? And draw 30 amps. Right. And I think that's what I think that's what the maximum is for I think for what most drones require is 30 amp draw. I think that's the max. That's what that's what the ones that you make, which are six cells. No, one, two, three. Six, there's six, yeah. The straight no, it would be 12 cells. A six S 2P would be 12 cells. 12 cells is two, yeah, because you've got two parallel sets, yeah. Um, then the weight, then you got to think of the weight of that. Um, well, they're they weigh usually about 50 grams per cell, right? So that's 600 grams, 600 grams, yeah, which is pretty heavy. That's uh, almost a pound and a half, yeah. That's a lot of weight. All right, I'm thinking about that because I'm definitely – I think I'm going to buy the tray, and that would only make a 1P, not a 2P cell. So, But then you think about it. You get it all put together, and then you use it, and then you go, well, crap, I could have just put a 1,500 mod. You what? You're not supposed to pee on the cells. <laughs> Electronics don't like it when you pee on them. Uh, yeah, see – I have to I have to put this technically into my brain into like you're saying you need to know your amp draw so you know how many cells you're going to need you might need a bigger a bigger a bigger uh 2p then they got a 3p which is freaking ginormous I could freaking run a scooter with that uh all right guys uh, we'll leave a we'll leave a link to the summary yeah. in, in the description you leave the short one, or I can do both here. A copy. You can, you can do both. Here. You can both of those in, in the description so people okay. can access that. The first one I put up is the long one. 
The second one I'm putting up is the short one. This is the this is the summary. The other one's 400 pages. This one's two pages. So I suggest you look at the smaller one. <laughs> so, all right. Um, now you put your mail. Oh, that's my Google. That's my Google uh, look. That's my here. Hold on here. I thought that was the right one. Hold on here. Details. Let's see. Share. Let's see. Oh, did I put that up there? Hold on here. Hold on. What did I freaking do? I am. I have got my head in my freaking keister. Let's see. Open a new window. Go Google user content. Mail. Google. Oh, and crap here. Where's my sit here? Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Anyway, don't click on that. Actually, click on it and see what happens. <laughs> Where's it going to bring you? The first one is the is the. I've, I've put the. There we go. That's the UAV. That good one. That's the FA version. I just gave I just gave you Kai's email address. So if you want to click on that. There you go. <laughs> and you can. You're welcome to. He would love for you to correspond with him. Um, all right. I'm going to go down and visit with my uh, with my family. Yeah. But, um, thanks, Kai. I appreciate you popping in. There. I appreciate you popping in. It's. Uh, I think it helps. To yeah, he calls me out and keeps me because I think yeah, like I said when I when I did my rant earlier. I was going off the seat of my pants. And I was sitting in, literally I was sitting in my car going, all right, people are going to freaking not want to do this. They're going to, and there is a lot of, there is a lot of words. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of fear mongering that goes on with this stuff. And well, it's, it's not as bad as it was thought of to be in, right. in the beginning. Right. So they toned us down quite a bit. Yep. They're trying to make it obtainable, but yeah, my my question is, how much are those modules gonna gonna cost us? Obviously, the the cost of new drones is gonna go up, having all that technology built into them. Right. Um. Fly far and wide, yawning. <laughs> he popped in. <laughs> He's get you, you're catching the end. <laughs> He's like, ah. He's. He, I still. Hey, I thought you were flying across the English Channel. I want to see that with the Mavic Mini. All right. <laughs> well, then he, he he's going to be in all different world of herd right now because he got to register everything with a camera on it. Yeah. Even your, even the even the cameras you got set up that uh, in your house <laughs> to check to see if your dog's barking. Got to go see what C one and C two and all that. Yeah. Baloney's going to be now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm <laughs> super stay. Thank you, Clyde. Yeah. Freaking, uh, you this, found this is, it. This is the. Uh, I've got a pound. Holy crap! I thought I was. I was 250 uh, two pounds before the stream. Now I've got 254 pounds. <laughs> You've been pounded. <laughs> Thank you. But anyway, all right. We're we're. I'm heading out. I mean, I kept in. We kind of already got used to the idea, remote idea. Yeah, I think Ivan's uh, with it. All right, guys, enjoy. Um, we like I said, we're gonna. We, I will. I will put up a noti a notification for the next stream that we do. We've been doing odd times, um, but we do plan on doing a New Year's stream. A New Year's. Well, I have a New Year's stream was yeah. four hundred AGL for a special guest. Yeah, he's gonna come on, and we're gonna straighten everybody out. Hopefully, we don't get scared away from the drone hobby when four hundred starts helping us out with the with the rules and regulations, but he's a good guy to, he's a, you know, he does commercial work and um, he has a lot of knowledge. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to feed off of that knowledge. So. And Sam Burns is in the house a little late. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we're, we're going to call it quits. Dad's got to go eat before. I got yeah, my burritos getting cold guys. I used to be upset and I had to register my dog and chip him. <laughs> then I got used to the idea. <laughs> Uh, Ivan, you are, you have always got the bright side to you. It's very enjoyable. Now your dog is safer. <laughs> are we all getting shit when we get the uh, COVID vaccinations? 
<laughs> is it should I worry? Should I worry that my wife makes me carry this around? <laughs> carry that around because you know she, you'll lose your keys. <laughs> oh, but she makes me wear it around my neck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, as long as it's not permanently nailed to your forehead, I wouldn't worry about it just yet. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you. I, 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 got, I also got a pee, too. Yeah, go eat. <laughs> I just drank two of these. <laughs> uh, that's what I really thank, wanted. Thank you all for, for stopping off, spending time with us. Yeah, we appreciate it. It was good. It was good. Thanks, Kai. I appreciate you, too. Uh, like I said, it's always good. It's always good to get a chat with Kai. And then if we can just do it uh, online, it just makes it more productive. Otherwise, we're just whining at each other on the phone. So, all right, man. Yeah, but, but I can use words on the phone. I can't use while we're doing a stream. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to send, I'm going to send Kai some earbuds. Okay. All right. That's going to be his, his, uh, his birthday present. I don't know when his birthday is, but we'll send him some earbuds. So when he gets, on remote locations, he can just connect his Bluetooth up. All right. We'll see you, Ivan. Later. Eat more possum. Later. Sam Burns. Later. But we're out of here. Bye. Bye.